Hi everyone, I hope you're all having an amazing day. If you own a Canon R7 and you wonder what the optimal settings might be for bird photography or other kinds of wildlife photography in general, then this short tutorial might help you with that. I will show you what settings I use and how I customize this camera for both birds in flight, fast moving, and also for stationary subjects. I don't wanna waste your time. We're gonna hop into the menu and we will go through all the relevant, most important settings. So here we are in the menu, the very first uh, sub-menu, which is about image quality. I've got mine set to RAW and I have got the JPEG HEIF option disabled. I only shoot in RAW. I use auto white balance most of the time. I think it does a pretty good job, but in post you can also change the color temperature later and adjust according to the scene or how you wanna portray your subject. Um, custom white balance setting, nothing relevant here. And then the next one, the lens aberration correction. I've got both the peripheral illumination and the distortion correction disabled. The reason why I have lens aberration correction disabled is because I have found these to be uh, slowing down the camera, especially when you are shooting at high frame rate. It might not be the case with this particular setup, but I've had this experience with both my 1DX Mark II and the Canon EOS 80D. All right. Next one, long exposure noise reduction is off and the high ISO speed noise reduction is set to standard. Page six, that doesn't concern us. This next submenu contains one of the most important settings here. The drive mode is set to high speed continuous plus, which allows us to shoot with the mechanical shutter up to 15 frames per second and also with the electronic shutter up to 30 frames per second. And the interval timer is disabled. The silent shutter function is off because we have a shutter mode set to mechanical. The reason why I use mechanical shutter is because of the rolling shutter issues that might arise with the slow, relatively slow readout speed of this particular camera body. All right, next one. The release shutter without cat is off. On page eight, we can see the IS, the image stabilizer mode, which is set to off, the digital IS, and then um, auto level disabled, and touch shutter is disabled for me. Page nine, the display simulation, I've got mine set to just exposure simulation, and uh, what else is here? And the shooting info display is set to the following. I've got everything just enabled I think this is the default setting as well. Nothing else here that's important for us. The viewfinder display format, I've got mine set to display one. And this next one, the display performance, is one of the most important settings that we have to look at. I've got mine set to smooth and also the suppress lower frame rate box is ticked. This allows us to have relatively lag-free EVF. Page 10. Uh, this is just about movie recording. I've got mine set to 4K at 25 frames per second and IPB, which gives us the best quality. All right, let's go to the autofocus settings. The autofocus operation for fast moving subjects is set to servo and then the AF area. I've got the whole area AF selected and then the subject tracking is on. The subject to detect, I've got it set to animals and the eye detection is also enabled. The last setting is about switching between tracked subjects and mine is set to zero uh, to initial priority, which means that once it acquires autofocus of a certain subject, then it's gonna stick to that. On page two, I've got the versatile multipurpose setting customized. I will show you what I've done here. The tracking sensitivity is set to minus two. It is set to logged on. The reason why I set it to lower value is because the lower the value, the longer the same subject is tracked if it leaves the autofocus point. The next setting is about acceleration and deceleration tracking and mine is set to plus two. The reason for that is because plus one and plus two are suitable for subject that move suddenly, accelerate and decelerate or stop. So for erratically moving subjects and most birds fall into that category. All right, now that we have covered the servo AF, let's move on to our next 
uh, menu. A next setting is about one shot AF release priority and I've got mine set to focus priority and it means that um, no shot will be taken until the subject is in focus. I've got the preview autofocus disabled and the lens drive when autofocus is impossible is on and the AF assist beam firing is on as well. Page four, touch and drag autofocus settings are off and the limit autofocus areas is off as well. I've got all of them enabled. And then sensitivity of autofocus point selection and orientation linked AF points are just untouched. On the next page, on page five, the manual focus speaking settings are off and the focus guide is off and the movie servo autofocus is enabled. On the very last page of the autofocus submenu, I've got the electronic full-time manual focus set to off and the info says you can specify the manual focusing operation with a lens that have an electronic focus ring please see Canon's website for supported lenses. I found this particular list that you can check out later if you're interested. I'm gonna put it up for a second and then you can stop to see which lenses are supported by this particular function. Even though my lens, the Canon EF 100 to 400 mm IS2 is not supported or supposedly not supported, I could still override the AI servo with the manual adjustment of the focusing ring. The lens electronic manual focus is set to off, focus ring rotation and the RF lens manual focus ring sensitivity are left at the default settings. The next submenu, the blue submenu doesn't have anything interesting for us. Just making sure there is nothing here that is of interest to us. Playback information display, I've got everything enabled there. Highlight alert is enabled and the autofocus point display is disabled for me. You can enable it. I prefer it to have disabled. We don't have to worry about the next one, which is about wireless settings. All right, we have arrived at the fifth submenu. On the first page, there is nothing that concerns us. Second page, nothing. Third page, nothing. Fourth page, I wanna talk a little bit about the screen brightness and viewfinder brightness. I've got mine set to four, which is bright enough and also saves a little bit of battery life. And uh, the same goes for the viewfinder brightness. I've got mine set to manual and I left it at the intensity of three. Screen viewfinder color tone is set to two and the rest doesn't concern us. Next one, touch control is standard. The shutter at shutdown is closed, which helps with you know dust particles that potentially can enter that area and end up on your sensor. So we want to avoid that. So make sure that this one is set to closed. Once we've got everything set up, you can save these uh, settings into a custom shooting mode and then you don't have to worry about setting it up ever again. We have arrived at the second last submenu exposure level increments, ISO speed settings. We don't worry about that. We are at the customize buttons page, which is really important. I'm gonna get into this menu with the customize buttons. I've got the back button autofocus uh, enabled. So with the shutter button half press, only the metering stats. With the autofocus on button, I've got it set to metering and autofocus stat. And if we hit the info, we get this page. Uh, where you can further customize. And uh, I've got my servo AF characteristics set to one. This is the versatile multipurpose setting, which we customized earlier. And this is what I use for birds in flight and fast moving subjects. The autofocus operation is set to servo. The autofocus area, I've got the whole area AF enabled. And then subject tracking is on, subject to detect animals the spot detection is on and the eye detection is on as well. Alrighty, and then we go to the next button which I customized. This is the little star. With the auto exposure lock button, I've got the direct autofocus area selection, which gives you some flexibility in certain scenarios where the eye detection doesn't work, then you can narrow down the autofocus area just to a specific um, area within the viewfinder and this can help the autofocus to be more precise and more functional. 
on this very last page, you can further customize the menu and you can add a couple of uh, items or register items, settings that you tend to use quite frequently or change quite frequently. I have added the shutter mode for mine, which is currently set to mechanical and the image stabilization mode because I also shoot a fair bit of uh, videos and I want to be able to disable the image stabilization quickly. And then the last one is custom shooting mode C1 and C3. And this is where you can actually save all the settings uh, by hitting the register settings. And then you can pick either C1, C2 or C3. Currently I have the C2 set to birds in flight and the C3, which I'm going to switch to right now for stationary subjects, uh, birds that are perched and don't move much. All right, now that we have covered the settings that I use for fast moving subjects, including birds in flight, let's talk a little bit about the settings that I use for stationary subjects as well. For this one, you should go to page seven in the first sub menu and then go up to drive mode and then use single shooting. Interval timer is disabled again. The silent shutter function is set to off for me. I'd like to have a little bit of a feedback you can definitely enable that if you don't want to disturb wildlife or if you are in a, a scenario where you definitely don't want to have any noise or make any noise. The shutter mode is set to electronic. We are in the autofocus submenu now and then let's go up to the top. Here I've got the one shot enabled and then the autofocus area. I've got the spot autofocus enabled. The smallest autofocus area besides the eye detection autofocus, which provides you with the most precision. Subject tracking is set to on, subject to detect is set to animals, eye detection is on, and the switching track subject again is set to zero. This one doesn't concern us now. We have already covered this. The one shot autofocus release priority is set to focus. All right, let's have a look at the customized buttons for the one shot autofocus. Again, with the shutter button, I've got the metering start enabled instead of the metering and autofocus start. And with the auto exposure lock button, I've got the eye detection autofocus enabled. For me, these settings have worked quite well. When the eye detect autofocus isn't accurate enough, you can always switch back to the spot AF, which gives you very precise control as to what you want to have your focus on. I just want to briefly touch on the exposure settings, the basic default settings that I use for birds in flight. The shutter speed range that I recommend is between 2500 of a second and 3200 of a second. And the aperture that I normally use is between f5.6 and f7.1. Normally I go for f7.1, especially if the subject is close enough because with greater depth of field, more of your subject will be in focus. The base ISO setting is 800. When there is plenty of light available during the day, that is a good base setting and then you can deviate from that. Here are several images I've taken with the R7 and the 100 to 400 millimeter telephoto lens. Hope you find this short tutorial useful if you did don't forget to subscribe for more nature photography content you might also want to check out these videos next thank you so much for watching and catch you all in the next one